Let's get right into it. Number 7. Choosing Zombie Mode We're the only species that looks at sleep and goes, Nah, I'm good. Every other animal on Earth sleeps when their body says it's time. But humans? We've turned avoiding sleep into an Olympic sport. Take Randy Gardner, this wild 17-year-old who decided to stay awake for a science fair project. He managed to keep his eyes open for 11 days and 25 minutes. By day two, he couldn't tell what objects were just by touching them. By day three, he was stumbling around like a drunk penguin. By day four, his brain started playing tricks on him. He thought he was a famous football player and kept seeing street signs turn into people. Our bodies have this perfect system built in. When it gets dark, our brain releases melatonin. Throughout the day, something called adenosine builds up, making us sleepy. It's like having a built-in battery meter. But what do we do? We override it with coffee, energy drinks, and bright screens. It's like having a car with a fuel gauge but deciding, I bet I can make it another 100 miles on empty. After just one night of bad sleep, your brain turns into a potato. Your reaction time gets so slow that a sloth could beat you in a race. Your immune system basically puts up a gone fishing sign. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes about as much sense as trying to breathe underwater. Our ancestors went to sleep when it was dark, because trying to gather berries at midnight is a great way to become a lion's midnight snack. It's literally like knowing you need oxygen but holding your breath to watch one more cat video. Number 6. Spicy Food Imagine taking a bite of something that makes your entire body scream, Danger! Your mouth feels like it's on fire. Your eyes turn into tiny waterfalls. And you start sweating. And what do you do next? You take another bite. The culprit behind all this madness is a sneaky little chemical called capsaicin. When capsaicin hits your mouth, it binds to the same pain receptors that warn you about touching a hot stove. Your brain literally thinks your mouth is on fire, even though nothing's actually burning. Your body goes into full panic mode. Your face turns red, you start sweating, and your eyes water. But here's where it gets really weird. We keep coming back for more. Scientists think it's because we're basically thrill-seekers in disguise. It's like riding a roller coaster with your tongue. Your brain knows you're not in any real danger, so it releases these feel-good chemicals called endorphins. The craziest part? This whole spicy food thing completely defies evolution. Capsaicin is actually a plant's defense mechanism to stop mammals from eating it. It's like the plant putting up a do-not-eat sign, and humans just going, challenge accepted, birds can't even taste capsaicin. They're just flying around eating spicy peppers like they're candy, wondering why mammals are making such a big fuss. We're the only mammals who looked at a plant's ancient defense system and thought this would make a great hot sauce. Number 5. Forbidden Feasts Imagine your brain suddenly telling you that a piece of chalk looks absolutely delicious. People with pica get intense cravings for things that definitely aren't food. Some folks suddenly start craving dirt like it's chocolate cake. Others might look at a piece of paper and think it's a tasty snack. There are even people who get urges to munch on ice all day long. These cravings can be so strong that people can't resist them. Sometimes it happens because the body is missing important nutrients. It's like your body's GPS system going haywire. Instead of directing you to the grocery store for vegetables, it's pointing you toward the stationary cupboard. Your brain's basically saying, that eraser looks packed with vitamins. But eating these things can be super dangerous. Imagine trying to digest a handful of paper clips. Your stomach isn't exactly equipped with a metal detector. So next time you're hungry and your brain suggests eating your pencil, maybe grab a sandwich instead. Number 4. Dancing with Death Most animals would run away from dangerous situations as fast as possible, but humans? We're different. We actually pay money to do stuff that could get us killed. A zebra doesn't wake up and think about dancing with a lion for fun. But humans surf 50-foot waves, climb frozen waterfalls, and jump out of perfectly good airplanes. Some people are actually wired to love this stuff. Scientists call them high sensation seekers. These folks feel more pleasure and less stress when they're in crazy situations. While most would be freaking out, they're having the time of their lives. It's like their brains are built differently. This thrill-seeking shows up everywhere. Maybe you're the person who always orders the spiciest food, or you're the one who cranks up music way past what normal people consider loud. Even the way some people drive or the risky jokes they tell, it's all connected to this weird human quirk. Some scientists call these folks Big T personalities. It's like they've got an internal motor always revving, looking for the next rush. Throughout history, people have been doing crazy risky stuff just for the thrill of it. From an evolution standpoint, this makes no sense. Nature usually rewards creatures that avoid unnecessary danger. But somehow, 
We humans ended up with this bizarre love for thrills. Perhaps this weird quirk is what sets us apart. We're the only species crazy enough to jump off cliffs for fun. Number three, our weird art obsession. Imagine being a caveman, and instead of hunting mammoths or building better shelters, you're spending hours drawing on cave walls. Nature's rule book would call this a major glitch. Every human society we've ever found has been obsessed with making art. We're literally the only species that does this on such a massive scale. Some birds decorate their nests to attract mates, but you don't see them writing symphonies or carving sculptures. We spend countless hours making things that serve zero survival purpose. Our ancestors, living in harsh ice age conditions, thought, you know what we need? A flute made from bone. Scientists found these 40,000-year-old instruments next to incredible cave paintings. Some scientists think maybe art helped early humans bond as groups. Others say it might be a way to show off good genes. Even today, we pour massive resources into movies, music, and art. We'll spend hours perfecting a drawing that won't feed us or keep us warm. We pick up pretty shells at the beach knowing they're completely useless. It's like our brains are hardwired to create and appreciate beauty, even when it makes zero survival sense. Perhaps this weird quirk is what sets us apart. This weird, wonderful obsession with making beautiful, completely impractical things. Number 2. Altruism Towards Strangers Imagine seeing someone jump into freezing water to save a drowning person they've never met. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes absolutely no sense. Nature is supposed to be all about survival of the fittest and passing on your own genes. So why would anyone risk their life for a complete stranger who shares none of their DNA? Scientists have actually found that these superhelpers might have different brain wiring. Their empathy sensors are cranked up to maximum, making them super sensitive to other people's distress. One theory says we do this for social recognition. When you help strangers, other people notice. Your reputation gets a boost, and suddenly you're the person everyone wants to help when you're in trouble. Back in our cave-dwelling days, helping others in your small group meant better survival chances for everyone. Maybe this ancient wiring just got supersized as our societies grew. Now instead of just helping our small tribe, we're helping complete strangers across the globe. During natural disasters, people rush to help folks they've never met, sharing food, shelter, and resources. Being kind to strangers might be the ultimate cheat code that helped us build massive societies. Number 1. The Tickle Paradox Imagine being attacked by someone, and instead of fighting back, you start laughing uncontrollably. That's exactly what happens when someone tickles you. You're literally begging someone to stop while laughing like you're having the time of your life. But here's the strange part. You can't tickle yourself. Scientists have found there are two types of tickles. First, the light, feathery kind, like when a bug crawls on you. Then the heavy-duty tickling that makes you lose your mind laughing. And it always happens in the same spots. Armpits, ribs, feet. These are all vulnerable areas. Some scientists think tickling might be an ancient defense training system. Like your body's way of saying, protect these spots or you'll die. Even baby chimps laugh when they're about to be tickled. They start giggling before anyone even touches them. It's like we're born pre-programmed to respond to tickling with laughter. Some scientists think it might be nature's way of forcing us to bond with each other. After all, you can't tickle yourself so you need other people to do it. It's like your body's forcing you to interact with others whether you want to or not. Next time someone's tickling you and you're laughing while begging them to stop, remember, you're experiencing one of evolution's strangest glitches. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.